puncher yet. <laughs> the man's only been sitting in the Oval Office for two months, John. He's probably still trying to decide what color carpet to install. You should damn well be near the top of his list of rewards for your assistance in his overwhelming victory over the Hoover forces of darkness. Franklin doesn't forget who his friends are. I hope you're not risking your chances any, Joe, for a place in the government. What do you mean? If you don't mind my saying, Joe, there's rumors about you've been doing quite a bit of short selling on the market of late. You don't believe all the rumors you hear, do you, John? I'm more inclined to believe some than others. Risky business. I wouldn't want to be one caught with my hand in that honey pot these days. Fella's name would be mud in a lot of respectable circles. No question about it. If he was caught. Better keep our eyes peeled for Joe. He must be around here somewhere. If not, we took a wrong turn back there somewhere, and this is Groton. You have no competition. You're gonna win it. If I don't, my old man will write a very unpleasant letter to the administration, withdrawing all future financial support to this institution. Would he really? No. What do you think about it? I'll see you later. Well, it's about time you showed yeah. up. Have you been? Oh, here's Marjorie. Hey. 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 Come here, boy. <laughs> so far, three fathers of your fellow graduates tell me you're a shoe-in for the big one this afternoon. They have private sources or what? Just your reputation, kiddo. Nothing private about that. All right, all right, all right. I have to join my class Oh, you look so pretty. No, not so easy. Oh, hello, Jack. Oh, there's my boy, Jack. I have feeling, Jack. What in heaven's name is that you're wearing? Oh, something borrowed, something blue. I think he's got a different ceremony. I'm looking at your shoes. You might have given them a bit of a pop. Well, I did. I just didn't keep for some reason. Oh, must be the humidity. We've had lots of rain. Leave like him alone, Ma. <laughs> if you saw what I had on under this thing, you'd have a conniption. That's right. <laughs> Ask the boys. Stick up for your brother. I That's right. Yeah, even best. if he's lying. What? Lying is the yeah. lion's beside the point. You tell him, John. Right. Uh, sorry, I got a pimple for Joe's Listen big carnation day. Don't be a small Be my handsome Now, as a fitting conclusion to today's ceremonies, we come to the awarding of the most prestigious and, yes, this coveted prize. Bestowed to that graduating sixth former who, in the course of his career at the Choate School, has best exemplified those qualities of scholarship and sportsmanship combined, for which this great institution has been recognized and, we hope, honored. The Harvard Trophy, class of 1933, is hereby awarded to Joseph P. Kennedy, Jr. Now then, I fully expect you'll be tracing your brother's footsteps in two years' time running up there to clutch the Harvard Trophy to your own bosom. I don't think the Harvard Trophy is in my destiny, Grandpa. That sort of thing is more in Joe's line, I think. No cause to think so, Jack. True enough, you may be lacking a bit in his discipline and maybe not always quite so fit in the physical way. But otherwise, you're every bit as top draw as Joe and there's no one would say otherwise. Well, I don't know about that lost part, Grandpa. Right then. Best to have it out. Jack, try as they might otherwise, in all fairness, every family generally has a favorite. And Joe Jr. got the nod in this one well enough. But your dad has especially grand hopes for him. And your mom gives him a bit of special favor. It's none of your brother's fault, and none of his doing. Oh, I, I know that, Grandpa. Joe's a great guy. Don't get me wrong. Heck, I would do anything for him. And he would for me, too. And has plenty. Don't get me wrong. Just gets a bit wearying sometimes. Forever being Joe Kennedy's kid brother, doesn't it? <laughs> Throws a bit of a shadow, he does. Your dad says you're something of a literary bent. 
Yeah, uh, it seemed to be able to put one word after another fairly well. And where is that history? I was tossed in history as a lad. Hmm. Made a bit of it as well. So I guess you must be glad that Joe wants to go into politics, huh? Going to England, studying with Mr. Lasky and all that? Hmm? Uh, well, no schoolrooms for it in my day, laddie. Yeah. Professor Lasky's top notch, and Joe's got all the makings, no doubt of it. Hmm? Can I tell you something, Grandpa? It's, it's just between us, though, okay? Okay. Joe's a real winner, all right, and he's... I mean, he's smart. He's smart as the devil. But to tell you the absolute truth, I think... I think I'm just as smart. Maybe even... Well, I'm just as smart, and... and I just haven't, I haven't worked things out yet. Do you know what I mean? I can't really explain. What I mean, it's just something that... I don't know. Good morning, Joe. just been spiked. I'm speechless. Ambassador. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I'm speechless. Oh, here's Kate. Shall I? It's your father. He's just been... Shall I tell her or will you? Tell me what? Is something the matter? He wants to talk to you. Daddy? Hi, what's up? Yikes, are you kidding? You're not kidding. Ambassador. Holy Moses. But I, but I thought you were going to be in the cabinet. Ask him when. Mother wants to know when. March. March? That's soon, March. Oh. <laughs> Seriously, Dad, it's really great news. Ma's beside herself. Have you talked to Jack yet? I'm gonna call him first thing in the morning. Have you? Uh, I spoke to him after Ma told him. How's he feeling? He says fine. Uh, they're throwing him out of the hospital tomorrow. A touch of the flu wouldn't keep Jack down. I've been having thoughts about your future after you graduate in June. I'm going to law school in the fall, remember? I'm considering a postponement. Why? How would you like to be the secretary of the U.S. ambassador to the court of St. James? So what did he say? He asked how much to pay. <laughs> Ain't he a kidder? You know what that wise guy did? He sent me flowers, supposedly from a girl. I think I'll wait till they wilt and send them back to him. Okay, so now that Joe's immediate future is taken care of, you think you might find a temporary spot for a deserving Harvard undergraduate in your operation over there? I'm working on it. Hold yourself in readiness. Okay. Uh, temperature time, Dad. Uh, nurse wants to take my temperature. She doesn't realize it rises every time she walks into the room. Lay off the nurses. Hey, um, you want a bit of arcane history? What history? Well, it seems that there have been four or five ambassadors to England who later on became president. There's uh, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, James Monroe, and uh, I can't remember the others. Don't get any ideas. I won't. Excuse me, um, my pulse is racing, isn't it? And, 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 would you just check my blood pressure? It's up. Question is, Dad, are you getting any ideas? The, uh, ambassador declines to comment at this time. <laughs> That's very diplomatic, Dad. You're learning fast. Seriously, great news, congratulations, and I assume I'll see you in Bronzeville at Christmas? With bells on. Don't bite the thermometer. I won't bite. How would you like to spend Christmas in Bronxville, New York, with a really wonderful family? Huh? These days, in view of the very troubled political situation in Europe,
Europe, in which Herr Hitler figures so prominently and dangerously, there is in all likelihood no more important place than the London 